Welcome to the Moonflower Path Podcast. This space is for the highly sensitive, the creatives, the earth loving, the caregivers, the weirdos, the feelers, the change makers, and dreamers of the world. Here, we are all about guiding you to trust your body intuition so you can find home and shift culture. Through the exploration of somatic practice, self-care, and seasonal ritual, my hope is that you will be inspired to be in harmony with yourself and in a dance with the earth. I'm your host, Carolyn, and I'm so honored and grateful to be here with you today. Hello, lovely listener, and welcome back to the Moonflower Path podcast. If you didn't get a chance to listen to last week's first episode of season one, I'd encourage you to give it a listen so you can hear a bit more about the why behind the creation of this space, this resource, and how it will serve you and help you transform from feeling disconnected and disempowered in your body as a big feeler to beginning to claim the beautiful way that you are. Speaking of transformation, in today's episode, I share the first chapter of my journey, I guess, um, towards where I am now, around the impact and transformation that I went through when making the big decision to put my body and my self-care at the forefront of my life. I know firsthand what it feels like to feel physical symptoms from mental illness or severe burnout which I believe is a manifestation of ignoring your intuition, but I digress. We will talk about that more another day, but today I really wanted to talk about how um, just the first, first steps of recognizing the need to actually care for your body. And it almost feels like at this point, like, uh, like we know this, but I want this to be a space where I'm really walking alongside you from the very beginning of your journey and for me at the beginning of my self-care journey I didn't know this and I was ignoring it and it wasn't something that I was prioritizing so if that's you if you feel like you're at that part of your journey then this episode is for you we'll also end with some inquiry on how your body is doing your relationship with self-care and a few simple ways that you could implement somatic self-care in your life today. So first I wanted to start with self-care defined, just defining the word self-care, like the literal definition of the word. The practice, uh, so there's, there's two definitions. One is the practice of taking action to preserve or improve one's own health. And like one A is the practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well-being and happiness, in particular during periods of stress. So can we just talk for a moment about how sad that the literal definition of self-care illustrates that self-care is only needed in times of stress? Now, don't get me wrong, this is super common, and it's also how my own story started, so please don't feel like, um, if that's the case for you, if you're feeling like, oh, now I want to implement self-care into my life because I'm stressed, is something to be shameful or something wrong. But at the same time, both and can be true, I would love if this podcast, if our community, if this space that you are welcomed into could help inspire you to implement self-care into your life before you're at the end of your rope. But that will come. Today we start at the beginning. Somatic comes from the Greek word soma, and soma means the body. So when you put the word somatic at the beginning of anything, it means that the body is at the forefront of that practice. That is what we are all about here. 
I'm not talking extravagant self-care like taking fancy vacations or having to buy all natural skincare products that might cost you a fortune or getting a crystal infused water bottle, which by the way, if you love those things, then yes to all of that. But what I'm truly talking about is the act of deeply loving and caring for your body in the ways that suit your needs so that you can have the clarity to be led by your own intuitive body move in ways that feel empowering, feel worthy and enough no matter what, and feel connected to the earth. Okay, so let's get into chapter one of my story. 2019 was when this part of my journey really started. I was working a full-time managerial job at a premium fitness club. I had gotten the job originally because I wanted to get my foot in the door a year and a half earlier to be able to teach yoga at this gym. But the demands of the job and the time it took for me to recoup and replenish myself when I wasn't at work gave very little time for me to pursue adding anything else on my plate like teaching yoga. I had gotten certified in 2014 and since then had only really taught a few weekly classes on the side, but had always believed that I had to get quote, a full-time job, a real job, to financially support my, quote, hobby of teaching yoga. In October of 2019, I got my first, quote, head thing. At the time, that's what I called them. The way I can describe it is that it would start out of nowhere with a specific smell overpowering my system that seemed to come from nowhere around me. I would then begin to have strange images, flashbacks of dreams I'd had in the past days, terrifying images. I'd then break out into a sweat, my eyesight would become blurry, and a feeling of terror would overcome me, forcing me to have to sit down wherever I was. The first time it happened, I was at work at the front desk and quickly had to rush to the bathroom to write it out. It didn't last more than a minute, but it really did feel like a lot more than a minute, but really once it ended... I was just like, oh, okay, well, that was weird. (laughs) I made my way back to the front desk and just kind of ignored it. The thing is, though, that I was actually familiar with these attacks, hence I had a name for them. Back when I was in high school, I went through a period of a few months where I got them, and we went through a whole route of neurology testing to see what was going on. You see, the symptoms described are very similar to a mild seizure, So it was taken very seriously at the time by my doctor, but all the tests came back negative. There was nothing, quote, physically wrong with me. Eventually they passed and I forgot about them until 10 years later. After that first one, again, like I said, I almost just shrugged it off as a fluke, not yet connecting the dots. But they began to become more regular. So sure enough, I'm back at the doctor. This time, however, my new doctor says... It sounds to me like you're experiencing panic attacks. Uh, I was absolutely not interested in hearing that. I was a yoga teacher. I knew how to handle myself. I knew how to keep myself calm. There is no way that there was something mentally wrong with me. So this is an interesting moment to pause. Isn't it fascinating that we'd rather have a diagnosable medical condition that could cause us to have to take medication for the rest of our lives then be told we're navigating a mental illness. Don't get me wrong, there are often very clear medical reasons as to why you might be experiencing pain or strange symptoms in your body. Yet at the same time, there is usually also an energetic or emotional reason that could be contributing to the cause, which at first can feel like, oh, so you're telling me the way that I'm feeling, the symptoms that I'm experiencing are my fault, right? Because I can control my energy. I can control my emotions. But it can also bring in a sense of empowerment, right? If we flip it, if I'm partly the cause of this, then I am also part of the solution, How empowering could that be? I'd also like to address the both and of the situation. If the physical sensations you're feeling are just that, very real and very physical, you can't simply just think your way out of feeling that way. So this is about addressing both ends of the spectrum, the physicality as well as the emotions. But at the same time, the physical sensations you're feeling are very well, might be because of the way you think and feel. Why is that? Because there is a much greater relationship between your mind and your body than we've been told to believe. 
But today we're focusing on the physical. So let's get back to the story. The doctor says it's panic attacks. I say, no way. I go down the very same route I did over 10 years ago and all the neurological tests come back again, negative. So it is my fault, I thought. I then had some serious self-compassion to practice here. There was no way I was going to be able to continue working with the frequency of these attacks. And if I really thought about it, I was beginning to connect the dots. I really wasn't happy at my job, like really not happy. So I took the great risk of, for the first time in my life, putting my body first. I quit my job. It became now a practice in self-compassion and deep curiosity. Clearly, my body was trying to tell me something, and there was no way I was going to be able to ignore it this time. So instead of ignoring or getting frustrated with my body's inability to just, quote, keep up with life, which I'd been doing for years while trying to fit into society's demands around getting a real job, it turned into the beginning of a conversation that started with, okay, body, I'm listening. What do you feel? So luckily I had the basis of my yoga practice to be able to come to. So sure enough, I'd roll up my mat and see what could be done about my body. But this was a different experience. When usually my practice was filled with big, bold, flowing movements, my body was in no way able to move through that type of movement. I was exhausted. I'd go to a class online, because at this point we're deep in pandemic mode, and I'd spend about 80% of the class in child's pose or laying on my back. I eventually just stopped going to classes and started literally just doing what my body wanted in the comfort of my own living room. I started getting curious about the rhythms my body was going through and kept asking my body, what do you feel? What do you feel? How can I care for you? So I was learning to support my body in the safety of my own practice. So I would like to say that after about six months of having made this decision and having gone through that part of my journey, um, I guess about over two years ago now, I completely got rid of the panic attacks to that severity and we'll talk more about that and what the next few chapters of my self-care journey look like after that in other episodes but let this first part be a gentle reminder of what can happen when you prioritize caring for your body every single day. So after hearing a little bit about my own journey, I'd like to turn it back to you. This might resonate with you. Maybe you hear some similarities in your own journey. Maybe you are way past that point and you've actually discovered some ways to care for your body. Or maybe you're like deep in it. (laughs) You're deep in some chapter in your journey where your body is going through some things it's feeling some things and so let's actually practice a little bit of compassionate curiosity some compassionate awareness some inquiry how often do you notice yourself feeling drained or feeling a consistent pain in your body or discomfort Or maybe there's a unique sensation in your body you've been experiencing that just doesn't quite seem right. I would gently invite you to get compassionately curious about how you address these. Do you ignore these signs? Do you feel frustrated about them? Or do you only ever assume it's simply a physical issue? Now, the compassion in the curiosity is paramount. There's nothing wrong with you or nothing shameful about how you've been addressing these sensations. You've been doing your very best with the information that you have. This is simply an invitation to look at your relationship with your body and your intuitive body a bit differently. Let's offer that same inquiry to your relationship with self-care. What is your relationship with self-care? Is it something that feels privileged, indulgent, or selfish? 
this is something we'll touch more in another episode, but what, like, what does it actually feel like? Maybe you're like, oh yeah, like I'm a self-care pro. And so maybe this episode isn't for you. And maybe this is an episode that you pass on to a friend or a family member that you know is experiencing some challenging stuff in their body this, these days. And you're noticing that they might not be addressing them or paying attention to them. Does this more attainable and accessible somatic self-care sound like something that's more your vibe, right? This idea of caring for your body, not based off of what other people are telling you to do, that you need to be drinking green smoothies, or you need to be practicing Pilates, or you need to like, I don't know, right? Like all of those like self-care buzzword tips that we read, maybe you maybe that's like why you have some apprehension to self-care because it seems and it feels like something that only like young white skinny girls do but what would happen if you actually explored your relationship with caring for yourself through this lens of putting your body first and actually just listening to your own body and then being like, all right, body, what do you need? So here is my one simple yet impactful self-care advice to end this episode with. Next time you notice yourself having a sensation of some sort that just doesn't feel quite right, tired, pain, dizziness, upset stomach, whatever, what would happen if you offered that part of yourself the same care you would offer to a friend who is going through the same thing? feeling tired? What if you took a nap? Feeling pain somewhere? What would happen if you got up off the couch or the chair and moved that part of your body in gentle ways? Experiencing panic attacks? Breathe, darling. <laughs> and of course, I'm, I'm not a doctor, obviously, but I do have a very intimate relationship with this practice in, in my own body and in my own life and in witnessing it in community members. So, of course, use your own discretion, but my point here is to put yourself first. Stop ignoring your body and start living in deep, loving collaboration with it. What would happen if you truly prioritized somatic self-care every single day? Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Moonflower Path podcast. I'm your host, Carolyn, and ways that you can find more support from me and this cozy community are all found in the show notes. Please consider rating and reviewing this podcast and sharing it with a friend. Those are the best ways to show your support for this free and accessible resource. Wishing you a gentle rest of your day, and I look forward to connecting again with you very soon. Thank you.